Welcome back to another video, folks. Sending out a lot of love. My name is Lunar, and I'm not lost. But today, as requested, we have I read all 337 books in Skyrim, so you don't have to unravel. Uh, it was a good idea requested that I they uh, this person wanted to see something different from me, or like I guess out of out of ordinary of what I'm usually reacting to, and I don't mind. Here I am ready to deliver hopefully you find this entertaining i don't know how this is gonna be i've never watched unraveled <laughs> so let's find out let me make sure my speaker and everything is or the output is on the right thing yes we're good to go i think we're good to go look we're about to find out right now ah uh, yes. the elder scrolls games chock full of lore and skyrim is no different Hidden amongst the Draugr and dragons is a plethora of books full of very important and incredibly niche details. <laughs> but with all the spell casting and shouting you must do as Dragonborn, who really has the time to read all those books? I do, apparently. I read every book in Skyrim in order to answer the eternal question, no, should me. you read every book in Skyrim? And I'm here to give you my top five recommendations of books here in my Skyrim book report. So I chose this video because I was the most familiar with Skyrim. Well, from what I've seen from the list. Well, I think there's Mortal Kombat 2 from what I was told. But this interested me because the title is I literally read <laughs> basically 337 books in Skyrim and I thought what he just said right there should you read every book in Skyrim was due to certain books can level you up so you go around basically tapping whatever the use key is for you to basically get the free like experience points or whatever Skyrim book report how many books are there, really, in Skyrim? After all, there are only eight people credited as writers on Skyrim. Those eight people are responsible for every quest, every voice acting line, every response you can give to an NPC. How much time do they have to write all those other books? A lot. Holy Because they wrote this many books. This many books. Or at least they wrote most of them because a few of them have been grandfathered in from other Elder Scrolls games. Before I get into the nitty gritty, let me explain my process on how I did this Skyrim book report. I printed out every book in Skyrim and then I spent multiple eight hour days reading every single book. I whittled it down to 338 books because I didn't include journals or diaries. Everyone knows that self-published doesn't count. In total, that's 571 pages five and a half point font, over 316,000 words. I had two reactions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Include journals or diaries. Everyone knows that self- The numbers got away from me there. Holy shit, what? Published doesn't count. In total, that's 571 pages, five and a half point font, over 316 thousand words. I had two reactions to this. My first reaction was, wow, this is an incredible amount of world building. To write 300,000 words that could essentially be skipped over while still having the full Skyrim experience, it's amazing. And it's a level of world building that could only exist in an interactive medium. And for that, I commend you, Bethesda. My mm -hmm. second reaction to this was, what the fuck? Hey, Todd? <laughs> What the fuck? In my Skyrim book report, <laughs> I will be discussing. That's a smash cut. Oh shit. Hopefully, if I do my editing correctly, 338 books. Uh, actually, 337. I just realized um, over here, Songs of Skyrim. I, I put both of them in there, but there's a revised edition. I lied. It's just 337 books now. Obviously, I don't have time to synopsize all of these. And believe me. You wouldn't want to watch that, even if I could. I've split them into categories <laughs> to make this a little bit easier. First up, historical, historical books. These book titles academic. you see rolling up the screen are <laughs> all biographies or histories. What I categorized as histories was anything that had big historical dates in them, uh, okay. explanatory histories, or pretty mm -hmm. much anything that was boring. History's so boring! <laughs> uh, J.R.R. Tolkien 
did the world a disservice by making every single fantasy writer think that they need to chronicle every goddamn minute of their world in order for it to be legitimate. I don't give two shits about a king who lost a war 700 years ago. <laughs> Shoo, get out of here. Some of these biographies are- Oh my gosh, the fucking writing in this is fucking killing my soul because it's just like, I don't know if he, if they intended it to be like, written in a way where it feels I don't know it feels so fucking cringy to watch <laughs> lest I'm here watching it okay so what I'll say so far just is like a little dive into the middle of the video if uh, you want me to take my video down I have no problem with that uh, what is the name of the channel Polygon yeah actually pretty interesting uh but a lot of them are written like the chronicles of nukhulift i didn't tab it out because it's a shitty story <laughs> it happened in second planting pd 1220 that lord ichlandam on a journey in the western uplands came to nukhulift and protector ankard and general kungthunch met him there and dalen zanchu also came to the meeting they talked together long by themselves but this only was known of their business that they were to be friends oh, of each other. They nah. parted and each went home to his own colony. Riveting! Ugh, history's so boring. I'm done with this. Next category, instructional books. These are all field guides or basic recipes about how to make good armor or what flowers go in which potions. At best, they are in fiction instructional books. At worst, they are so obviously trying to get you to go do specific things, pulls you right out of the fiction. Come on, man. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Everyone's favorite, Kay. the academic books. Fun fact about academic books that I learned in college is that no one has ever enjoyed writing or reading an academic paper. <laughs> Why'd you put it in a video game? Mythical stories. It's kind of weird to differentiate things between myth and history, especially in this world where you can talk to demon princes. I split these two up because <laughs> these are very boring and these are slightly more palatable. They're more like- I mean, if you're skilled enough, you could talk to them in real life. But yo, it's, it's actually really weird that, hmm. I don't actually know where I was going with that. But you know what I did think about? No, let's continue. Creation myths, or they're just like random stories that are fun to read. So they're getting closer to good fiction. The poetic and dramatic. Everyone knows that poetry and theater oh, yeah, are meant nah, to be seen not feeling and not that one. read. And you have no idea how much it pains me that I do not have time to do stage readings of all these. Oh my God, I would have loved that. We have eh. What genre is eh? It's the catch-all. Um, these tend to be accounts, kind of like medieval fantasy op-eds, so I, I just put them here. Eh! We're done with these now, so... Get out of here! Finally, we have 59 books that I would consider good fiction. Good fiction. What I did here uh, is okay. I gave myself three criteria about what would make good fiction in the realm of Skyrim. Number one, does it help build the world around us? Number two, okay. does it give us an interesting or different perspective on that world? And okay. number three, is it good? Now you might say, Brian, <laughs> what gives you the right to say what is good fiction? I read all 338, you dingus. Believe me when I say that these were the only good ones. This is all I'm qualified to do now. I need a drink. <laughs> that still doesn't qualify him. <laughs> that is still up to you. But it's funny, I guess. Kind of, a little bit. Made me. <laughs> Okay. Now there's Exhale still 59 some air. of these, so I obviously can't summarize all of them. But True. I have left five off, and they are my top five books of Skyrim. So cool. we're going to talk about those. Number five, Advances in Lockpicking. Now, Advances in Lockpicking is actually an instructional book. But I think it does more than just the other instructional books, where you open them up and then suddenly you are better at lockpicking. Because <laughs> it's written by a thief in a very interesting voice. There's a great ending line for this book. Some thieves can't read. If you can't read, get someone to read this book to you. It'll make more sense then. That's great. Oh, I, I think that's a much more fun way than saying, 
Here is how you pick a lock. This is what this set of armor is. Better than instructional, just good fiction. Number four, Pala. In a world where f crazy creatures exist, how do you make fiction that is compelling, that people can just kind of experience in their own life? Pala is a necromantic, romantic book. It's a story about a man who sees this beautiful statue of a woman fighting a beast and falls instantly in love with this woman. Turns out, she's dead from fighting that beast. He decides to get into necromancy to bring her back from the dead. I kinda don't wanna ruin the surprise for you. It manages to tell an interesting story while also introducing these ideas of monsters and necromancy. It's kinda weird, but it's very well written. I'm gonna go ahead and put up <laughs> three and two. What? Why do I put up okay. the Argonian account okay. and Fae Falcon at the same time? Turns out it's written by the same fictional author, Wagen Jarf. This one's for you, Wagen. I'm a big Jarf head. He's not actually in the story at all. I don't. I, I couldn't find any instance of like him as an NPC. So I really hope he's in the next one because I want to meet Wagen. I just want to meet Wog and Jar. These ones were not actually written specifically for Skyrim. They were grandfathered in, but they do an incredible job of building the world around you. The Argonian account okay. is actually the second story in a series all about Decimus Scotty. This is kind of like the Hobbit of Tamriel, where we're taking this unassuming character and thrusting them into this completely foreign, amazing landscape, except instead of a Hobbit, it is a mid-level bureaucrat. It's full of screwball comedy and wonderful world building about the Black Marsh, which is where all the Argonians live. You have to fast travel by being eaten alive by a worm. That's great. I want to see that whenever we go to the Black Marsh. And it's so so flavorful, and that's why I'm a Jarth head. Faith Falcon. It's a story about a scribe who's terrible at his job, but gets this enchanted quill that forces him to be amazing, sends him into this madness, and then he kills himself at the end of the book. Spoiler alert. But that's not what the story is really about. It's an interesting fiction that teaches you about different Daedric princes and which ones could have caused this specific enchantment on oh, the Oh, you know. That's good world. Oh, you know exactly who caused that. What the fuck is the, um, oh, what is his fucking name? Let me see. I gotta look it up. Madness Daedric Prince. What is his name? Yes. Shio. Well, I always call him Shio Garath, but it, it's Shio Garath? Shio Garath? I don't fucking know. <coughs> Fuck is it? Shio Gorath. I I don't fucking know. I feel like he would cause something like that. Building. I am interested in the story. You told me something that I can learn about the world. I had a good time reading Faye Falcon. Jarth, you did it again. And that leaves us with the number one book. It's not the lusty Argonian mate. I feel like I should broach this subject. I'll tell you why I didn't include it in my good fiction list, and it's not because I'm a prude. Who doesn't love a little erotic lizard fiction? Ooh, come on, baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking Argonian. The reason I didn't include uh. the lusty Argonian maid as one of the best pieces of fiction is because it's seven acts long. Seven acts? There is no way you can manage to maintain that level of erotic yeah. tension for, for seven, seven acts. Yeah, That's for like seven five acts. and a half hours. As a person who has done one or two plays in my life, that's just unfeasible, okay? I'd like to see them try. I would like to see them try. Oh my God. God. Before I go to number one, I gotta go get a flu shot. This is not a joke. It's important to get your flu shot. All right, I'm back. The number one piece of fiction in Skyrim not Wog and Jarth, I'm sorry. It's Beggar, opinion. Thief, Warrior, King. It's four books, actually, but it's all part of Eslof Errol's story. It is completely fictional, even within the fiction of... From the introduction, it should be noted that these books are... Skyrim. The reason I put it first is because it's the only book that was legitimately hilarious. I straight up chortled. 
That's what I did oh in my. real life. That's amazing. The writing style of these four books is just oh, naturally hilarious. So there are so many bland, cookie cutter stories in Skyrim that follow the same setup, twist, punchline. This doesn't have that. that. It's just a. Not gonna lie, for trying to, trying to make the world feel so real and have so many books in the story. I would imagine most of the fucking books would be copy and paste. That's kind of what I thought they were. Like a few details changed and shifted here and there. Maybe a little bit, take some away from here, add it to here, throw, shorten this down a bit, switch the names here, switch some details here, and then kind of go from there. I would imagine they would be cookie cutter for fucking like, because you would, for an, an action, mostly action exploration intensive kill beast try to be the most overpowered thing and mostly the interactions with the npcs who's really going to be paying attention to the books but i did tell myself when i was a kid and skyrim first came out that i would get the books all i would try to fill out all actually actually this is what i did but i never read them if i had a house like uh breeze home i would literally just fill up all the shelves with books i found and shit like that and then I did the same one with the house in Windhelm. Windhelm is the right one, right? Yes. With the house in Windhelm, I filled up just the bookcase. I just tried to fill up every bookcase I came in every player home you could have. That's the only reason I picked up the books. So, yeah. Good story. One of these writers was just flexing. And I, I think that's... So you gotta hide a gem in there like this. It's wonderful that a writer had a or chance to, books. within the fiction of Skyrim, Write something that's just naturally funny. You should all go home onto your computers, boot up Skyrim, find these four books, and then read them in order. It's worth it. That's my quest for you in Skyrim. 300 gold points. That's it. Not gonna lie, he would not be able to do this probably, but with doing a video like this, and at the time, when did this video come out? Let's see. Ah, uh, back in 2018. At this time, if I was him, and I was thinking big and thinking the the impossible, which nothing is impossible. I would have took this video and tried to send it to Bethesda. And if in his opinion that those four cop like or well those four books, but I wanted to say those four covers of those books were that interesting, he should send them and they should release an official book for each. Like like a like a little four piece set you could get and some cool like Skyrim covers or something like that. That'd be nice. There's a YouTuber that made these, like, made spell tomes. Oh, what is her name? It's like her and her boyfriend, but it's like, the, I think, the, yeah. And they craft these fucking cool tomes. I used to follow them. It was fucking awesome. And I could just imagine those four books, if his, in his opinion at the time, were the best. He could have sent this video and was like, you should get these four, like, these books actually published. It would be like a funny thing. It'd be actually something unique to do than Skyrim fucking releasing the 10th anniversary edition. That's it. That's all of the books. So Just like, saying. what did I learn from reading all 338 books of Skyrim? Surprisingly, a whole lot. Like, uh, there are two main takeaways that I pulled from this. Number one, this is a masterclass on how to write effective flavor text. Between all of these historical, instructional, <laughs> the good fiction and, you know, the iffy fiction. This <laughs> is a way to learn what to do and what not to do. Obviously not everyone is going to connect with certain types of flavor text. I'm sure there's a lot of people that disagree with me and think that the mm -hmm. historical is the most important flavor text. And you know what? They are valid and they're wrong. Facts. And they always seem to find my comment sections. When Facts. you take something good yeah. like Feyfoken, which teaches teaches you about the Daedric Princes, but in an interesting like way, that. it really shines in comparison to the three and a half, half million biographies of Berenzia. You don't even see them in Skyrim. I don't care about Berenzia. It's <laughs> boring. But not like Feyfolken. That's really interesting and effective. Faye also, Falcon. just like teaches you about all these wonderful forms of fiction. If you're a fiction teacher, like teach your kids with Skyrim. Teach the kids. With Skyrim. I got a creative writing degree. You know, this video was back in 2018, and I don't want to shit. <laughs> I don't want to shit on TikTok or anything, but imagine in this time laughing at Skyrim teaching your kids. Teach your kids with Skyrim, knowing now, today. 
TikTok is probably going to teach your kids. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Second takeaway, this is a wonderful teaching device about unreliable narrators. So many of these histories are negating other ones. This is a wonderful way of showing people you need to read everything if you're going to get the whole picture. I read everything. I am the keeper of- Not only that, that's actually cool. He said the history, though the most- Wait, let me run it back just so I don't get it wrong. ...device about unreliable narrators. So many of these histories are negating other ones. Negating this other ones? That's actually cool. That stays true to like real life where it's like, it depends on in whose hand. Who, who's writing what the story is always going to come out different. This is a wonderful way of showing people you need unless to it's someone genuinely from the heart trying to you know tell the story to the best of their abilities truthfully who probably went through all the history books to read everything if you're going to get the whole picture i the read everything i am the keeper of the picture that's every book in skyrim so it's time for us to revisit that ever present question should you read every book in skyrim no! What? How could you watch this whole 10 plus minute video and think I would say anything? What? No! I bore this burden for you! Don't read them! No! Please, don't read them all. Don't read them! You can read the top five, that's fine. Oh! How dare you jettison my gift! Don't read them! <laughs> no! If you want to see me keep doing things like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And now for a staged reading of the Sultry Argonian oh, Bar. The ending was so cringe. I love it. Okay, that was actually all right. It was okay. I don't know if I would find myself watching too many. I might give... Uh, I fixed Fallout's music by creating a totally new genre. Maybe I'll watch that. Yeah. And actually, I have to correct myself. This is the first familiar name of something on the list. Actually, all of them are. Like The Sims, Fallout, but not that one. Waluigi, Kirby, they're all familiar names. The thing I would be most familiar with and probably would find funny would be only a small selection of these. But I think I will check out maybe one more and see how it does. But this is actually okay. So it was actually okay. Hmm. All right, anyways. Oh, the first comment on this is actually said, you're completely wrong. The best book in Skyrim, let's give this comment. The best book in Skyrim is one where a little girl has a meeting with some dragons and they ask and ask them, how do you speak when your jaws and lips are clearly not designed to create human speech? And the dragon re <laughs> responds the same way our bat like wings carry us when we're too heavy. We're obviously too heavy to fly. I ruined it by fucking up. The OK, listen, whatever. Uh, Yeah. I will see you in the next one. Much love and light. And hope this was enjoyable. Peace.